Well, first of all, uh, Taika Waititi is a... Uh, He's a genius, um, but yeah, he's. Uh, it was. It was just a, a fantastic opportunity for me to be able to kind of um, go and do something completely different that I'd never done before, and uh, also the kind of, you know, Taika definitely has his blueprint in his script of what you want. He wants you to do, but at the same time, he's very giving, and he kind of just lets you flow with it. And so it was. Um, it was just a joy. It was great. Um, I would uh, best describe it as a uh, course in, I, I, you know, it's essentially kind of, you know, are these children who are kind of forced into being a version of what is Boy Scouts to us nowadays, running around with grenade launchers and knives in their belts, you know, this was real, this is something that was, was actually happening and so, um, were they inherently evil or were they just kind of influenced by you know, especially Jojo's character not having a father figure and he finds it in this imaginary version of, of Taika, the character that Taika is playing. So, um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a funny thing in terms of content for it to be so touching, but it really is. Well, I think like now is a really important time to tell the story. Taika has been thinking about it for quite a long time. I think there is sort of like now is important, but always it's important. And I think there's a generation now who are forgetting some of the stories of the past. And so finding a comic way to retell the story is going to be a great way to educate people as well as have fun. You know, and Taika is brilliant at that because it's everything's so funny, but those laughs don't come without some meaning in them. I think so, and Ta Taika's always looking through the lens of a 10 year old boy, I think that's where his head's at. <laughs> but he has a real aptitude of sort of like seeing the world through kids' eyes, and, and I think in war, kids see that adults act like crazy people, you know, and it doesn't make a sen sense at all, and, and I think that's what we're sort of trying to show here, is that war is crazy, and we shouldn't forget that. Well, I'm not sure if Taika told you, but he obviously had initially had a lot of trouble finding someone to play Adolf Hitler and, and the, didn't actually get the film up and running. And then a few years down the track, Searchlight came on board and said, we'll do it, but if you play Adolf Hitler, the imaginary version of Adolf Hitler. And that sort of was the sort of like turnkey that sort of launched the whole thing. Um, you know, I think the story is it's disarming because it's told through the eyes of a child. And I think that's the most wonderful thing about it because often, you know, we, we don't want to talk about things that are uncomfortable as adults. We know we make really stupid decisions sometimes. Some of those things happen to be war. Um, but often when you can tell those stories through the eyes of a child and through their perspective, it's quite disarming and it allows you to see perhaps how ridiculous we can be sometimes. So, and even though this is set in World War II, it's still relative today, actually. I mean, look around, there's some pretty crazy things happening. I think, you know, in the, and maybe that's part of why it took so long to kind of actually come to fruition because in the beginning he never really saw himself in that role and I, I think that it wasn't something that we ever thought of him doing either but I don't think there is anyone else who could play that who could be a fat Hitler right now just a Polynesian Jew I mean who else is going to do it it was always fun it's always full of laughs um, whatever Taika does he makes sure that everyone's involved from PA to VFX supervisor, everyone has a say in the shooting process and I think the key is just everyone has a good time while we're shooting and I think it shows in the final product, you know, even though it was very controversial subject matter, we, um, I think we pulled it off. <laughs> well it's been a long time gestating getting this film made and actually being part of the very early part of the process kind of was the encouragement to kind of leap on when it finally got greenlit, got picked up by Fox Searchlight and we actually had some real kind of tools to work with rather than just kind of making up a world which generally you do as a production designer this time you know we had the motivation and the money to support it so Well I'm very happy that he was my first director obviously. He, he taught me a lot of things like life and energy and scripts and the way he directs is so interesting and his humour is so unique and clever uh, and I'm very happy that he was my first director. Well it's creative, it's unique, there's a bit of comedy, there's a lot of serious and sadness and it's all rounded interesting and shows a different side of the war. I, I, was, I felt very fortunate because 
they helped they helped me to act and they taught me and without them I would have been like signing that, that, that. so uh, I'm very well it's it's just really a really inventive uh, idea you know very unique film poignant and funny and beautiful yeah why do you think it is so interesting to tell this story through the eyes of a 10 year old boy? I think it's the perfect way to tell the story. I think it's a it's a really ingenious way to, to a new angle on it. Yeah, Tyke is uh, he's he's incredible. He's very unique. He's, he's, there's something really special about Tyke. Yeah, he's I mean, he wrote, directed, and starred in it. He's he's. The script was so fantastic. Um, it was really just it, it's unusual to read a script and have such a unique perspective and such a just a really different story I was really struck by that and I was a big fan of Taika's um, I knew him a little bit just from kind of the whole Marvel world and we had some friends in common and then I'd read you know, I'd heard about this script that was out there that was just supposed to be so extraordinary and it was it was really it was exceptional and and that's what actually drew me to 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 this film was the was the actual was the script. And I think the film is really so touching and such a it, it's, it's there's such humanity in it. Um, it 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 felt like if anybody could make this film, it would be Taika because he's incredibly sensitive and soulful, and you know I think he uses. The, he uses humor as a way to, um, you know, really get kind of draw in the audience so that we can actually have a moment of reflection. Um, you know, it's, it's really just incredibly clever, and I hope audiences love it as much as we do. Well, as Taika himself says, you know, he's seen a lot of war movies. He's seen a lot of war movies, actually, funnily enough, from the sort of child's point of view from the from the Allies' side, but less so from the German side of things. And I think, you know, Taika's got an amazing kind of childlike spirit anyway, and I think he taps into that childlike um, sort of wonderment and naivety, and I think he could really get into the brain of, of this young boy who is, you know, is being uh, conditioned, if you like, by adults to have these kind of these sort of sickening Nazi beliefs and, and the journey of this boy in, in a kind of growing up and realizing the sort of error of his ways is, is a really beautiful, brave, funny, uh, and I think ultimately very emotional story. I was really dazzled with what he did. Well, I think there's an unfortunate uh, truth, which is that stories about prejudice and about, um, you know, groupthink and about ignorance are always relevant. I mean, it's a sad state of, of sort of human affairs. And yes, there's been a more recent rise of sort of, you know, far right thinking and populism and if you like fascistic, you know, people, particularly across Europe. But I think it's always an ongoing thing. And I think this is a story to me, which is about, which is a kind of constant reminder of, of just the sort of common humanity of people, you know, and, and we can get, it's so easy to sort of become uh, stuck in our own little bubbles, uh, left or right, you know, and I think this is a useful reminder of sort of, you know, uh, empathizing with other people, seeing other people for who they are. I think it's a really heartening and, and sadly always relevant tale that needs to be told. You know what, I've, I'm a long-standing fan of not just Taika, but of kind of satirical comedy that plays with big ideas and does it in a funny way. And I think, you know, he's tapping it to me into a tradition of movies mocking and satirizing Hitler and fascism right back to the war itself with the great dictator Chaplin's film. Uh, there's a great classic, To Be or Not To Be, which is playful, famously, of course, the producers with Mel Brooks. And I think there's a sort of long standing tradition of using satire to undermine these people. Because there's one thing that fascists and, and, and dictators hate, and it's being laughed at. They can't bear it because it undermines the one thing they have, which is fear. And, and I think when you sort of dismantle that, uh, it makes you incredibly powerful. It's very exciting. Well, I found like I'd seen most of the, the films I'd seen uh, that deal with the experiences of World War II on both sides of, um, uh, of the picture. The, um, it was very serious and the model I've always loved those films and been really affected um, uh, by them and they've changed me. I feel like we're going to have to retell these stories and um, and keep reminding each other and, um, and other people what happened and um, and and what not to do in the future. Then we have to find new and more inventive ways of doing it. And I think that's why I chose to add 
lightness and a bit more uh, comedy and, and sort of yeah sort of change up the, the way that we tell those stories but also I was really happy with the way the character turned out it's more fun for me to play um, a, a more of a buffoon version of him um, even though he probably was a bit of a buffoon um, but it's uh, you know it's, as an imaginary Hitler from conjured from the mind of a boy is way more fun than me actually trying to play the actual guy yeah well um, I mean we have to start with Roman who plays Jojo he um, and he's an incredible kid. He's absolutely, absolutely dream and a sweetheart, and um, and very, very sensitive. It's all the qualities that I think, if you're trying to humanise, you know, someone on the, on the German side during the war, you know, you have to find actors that actually have uh, those qualities. And he does. He has it in spades. He's just an absolutely wonderful person. And then all the rest of the uh, the cast, obviously, yeah. Their, um, their experience and the history of what they've done speaks for, uh, speaks for itself. Well, I think it's got a really, really important story to tell, and it tells that story and that piece of history in such a unique way that I think, and in a different perspective, that I think will really speak to people and, and help the world see you know, World War Two and, and so on and so forth in a, from a different perspective and in a different way. And it's such an important reminder these days to people of what has happened in the past and what cannot be repeated in the future. So that's kind of what attracted to me it to me at first and working with Tyke <laughs> and everybody as well. Just so much fun. It just felt like we were playing all day and, and I don't know, it was... It was I, it was so beautiful working with Roman and amazing watching him be so like emotionally mature and, and there was so so much sensitivity coming out of such a you know a, a, a ten year old kid it's like crazy and it was so much fun yeah she's got a really really tough story and she's going through a really hard time. Um, and I really wanted to show and and, and Taika and everyone and wanted to show the, the strong and brave and staunch side of her and um, to, let, to let that shine through. Um, and like I said before, it's just so important to me that, that people are, know about what has happened and, and, and are reminded of the such a you know, disgustingly devastating impact it had on, on, on people like Elsa and yeah.